first we'll just kind of we'll start with uh just your name okay. where we're at and what do you do here uh my name is sergio brack and i'm the director of esports here at the university of maryland you know being a player um, it's something that I feel like a lot of directors in collegiate right now don't really have the experience of. Um, you know, they just come into collegiate from different sects of, um, you know, esports or different, you know, sectors of it. And so for me, I think that's allowed me to help, um, you know, my players have the best experiences possible because I have that empathy of, you know, knowing them as players, uh, knowing what it's like to juggle classes, juggle competing, juggle scrims, um, you know, having team issues, you know, internally and things like that. So. Um, I think if anything, it made my uh, passion for it, you know, even more so. Originally, it wasn't even my plan coming out of college at Ole Miss. Um, but I think being a player and, and having that knowledge has helped me immensely uh, to be able to empathize with my players. I was born and raised in the city of Chicago um, and not in the best neighborhood, an area called the Wild Hundreds. Um, and so my uh, mother and father uh, use video games as a way to keep me out of my environment. Um, and so my first system, I think, was a PlayStation 1. Um, and then we had an old Super Nintendo that they had. So I played Super Mario World, Crash Bandicoot. Um, the Amazing Spider-Man, like all those things really, you know, inspired me to, to start my gaming journey. Black Ops 2 came out um, and I had an Xbox 360, had a Kinect mic, couldn't even afford a headset back then. Uh, but me and my friends got into GBs. I started watching the original Optic House with Scump and, and Merc and Nadeshot. Um, and it really, you know, made me want to start creating content, made me want to start competing. Um, I didn't know what esports was um, until that moment, um, honestly. And so once I ended up figuring that out, um, ranked play was or league play at the time was my like religion. That's all I played uh, pretty much every day with my friends. Um, and then when I finished that, you know, I ended up going to school at Ole Miss. Um, at this point, I had been competing um, in the amateur circuit for a little bit, doing, you know, tournaments here and there. Um, and one day I went on and looked um, to see if Ole Miss had an esports club because I saw Maryville and UCI playing each other in the League of Legends Top 8. And I said, man, you know, I, I wish Ole Miss had something like this. I, you know, I wish we could make something. And so I looked it up just on a whim, Google Ole Miss Esports, and I found like a dormant student org page. Um, but I sent an email anyway, just to see, you know, what was happening and if they had anything going on. Um, the secretary responded to me. She said, hey, we're having a meeting tomorrow. You know, is there, you know, any chance you can come by? And I said, sure. Uh, showed up, only person of color in the room. They were playing FGC titles, which at the time wasn't really my, you know, jazz. Um, and so um, I asked them if they had a Call of Duty team and they sort of laughed laughed at me um, in the room and I vowed from that moment on that I wasn't going to let anybody get laughed at for, for asking that question anymore. So um, that's sort of where my journey ended up leading me to, you know, what College Cod was. Uh, one of the things I'm grateful for at Maryland is I get to focus more so on the holistic experience of what esports is on our campus and for my students. Everybody likes winning championships. I love winning, you know, but championships have like been there, done that. I want to innovate and do more for uh, the student body. Um, and so coming to Maryland, I think that was one of the more exciting things for me was you know my day looks different every single day there's days where i'm here doing media day stuff you know like i am with you all there's days where i'm you know uh going to k-12 initiatives and, and working with high schools and middle schools there's days where um you know i might have to pivot and you know uh, help teach a, a cpr class and then also come talk to a class about what esports is and, and the opportunities within it so um there's so many things that i've um, you know been afforded um here but definitely the biggest thing i think is that um it's reignited my passion for the job just because every day is different Different, genuinely. I think Black Ops 4 at Ole Miss was a, a pivotal moment for us. Um, you know, we had a team that had a lot of turmoil at the beginning of the year. A lot of people counted us out and kept telling us, oh, Ole Miss can't beat this team, Ole Miss can't beat this team. Um, we ended up making it to the national championship game against Humber College that year. Um, and so I remember being really disappointed when we didn't come out with the win. Um, and the next day I came um, and checked my email when I woke up and we ended up having some administrators email uh, one of our faculty advisors at the time, you know, letting them know that they had watched the game with their family and absolutely loved it. Um, they were so proud of us um, and that they, uh, the provost wanted to meet with us about esports and what the future could look like. Um, and so coming from a team that, you know, wasn't wanted or was, you know, sort of looked down upon within the club at that time, um, that really meant a lot. Um, and it ended up boosting Ole Miss to where it is today in terms of having a full-time director, having a facility. Um, and so that was a very pivotal moment for us. Honestly, this is gonna sound super cheesy, but I just really get a kick out of watching my players develop as people. Um, and so, you know, the small token of players, you know, telling me, hey, coach, um, this conversation we had really changed my life and changed my, you know, outlook on things and, and my perspective on how I am as a teammate um, or watching my players even graduate, you know, and being able to see them walk across the stage and their families be proud and having esports be the driving factor behind that. Um, and their, you know, personal development, I think is what I, you know, enjoy the most and are probably some of my proudest moments uh, doing the job.
Typically, you know, I, I'm a big advocate of like, you know, black stories should be told all throughout the year, not just in February. But I think this month in particular for me, uh, just sort of reemphasizes for me how important my role is now, um, because I didn't have, you know, collegiate directors, especially, or just in esports in general, I didn't have that many people that looked like me to look up to in that moment. Um, and so for me, it's, it's, you know, more so a month that, you know, reignites that for me in a, in a way that lets me know that I have to be on my P's and Q's at all times. Times, um, because I know there are black and brown faces that are watching me and what I do and you know seeing okay um, this is how Sergio is moving how do I need to move to get to the same place that he's at um, and so for me that that's what it is is, is you know me re-emphasizing to myself how important my role is because I think sometimes I forget that and I get in this micro bubble of UMD UMD only but I have you know much bigger impact than that and you know this month reminds me of that.